Ian Foster joins us, the All Black coach. Welcome back. Afternoon, Marty. After your interview uh, with Mike Hosking and talking to Gregor Paul as well, do you feel right now, hours later, that you did the right thing, that you would do it again? Absolutely. It's, um, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to anything overtly clever here. I'm just trying to express what, what the All Black head coach thinks of of what's happening at the moment and uh, to let people be clear on that. And, and I know that uh, everyone's going to have a different view about, about what I've said, but my fundamental reason is I just felt that people needed to hear what I think is the right thing for our team for this year. And, and hence the interviews. What has happened subsequent? I bet your phone has just been absolutely ringing hot. Let me guess, 4,000 text messages, WhatsApp messages, you've had to switch it off? <laughs> uh, look, yeah, you get, you get a few busy days on the phone and and they're either really good days or really bad days, aren't they? So it's, uh, but no, no, I, look, there's, uh, there's a lot of people out there frustrated with the process, frustrated with, what what's gone on? I get all that. I also completely respect the fact that it's a these are tough things for, for boards and to, to deal with and how to how to get everything right. And there's lots of dynamics here. And but I, I like to keep things in my mind pretty simple. As I felt that a lot of this debate has been about who's going to be the next coach and um, and, and and the timing for that and. Who suit, what timing suits different sorts of people. And for me, the only thing that is really important is that what's the best thing for the All Black team for 2023 going into World Cup? Because my, my, I'm the coach of the All Blacks. My job is to, to prepare this team for, for this World Cup, and that's my sole focus. If you thought it was best for the All Blacks and our chances at the Rugby World Cup, if you genuinely thought that, would you step away now before the tournament? If I thought it was best, well, the, the thing is, as a leader of a group, I want my I want my team to know that that I'm 100 percent it, and 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 so. Marty, I, I know that there's a desire for change. I get all that, and but what happens in 2024, quite frankly, is not not high on my agenda right now. The only thing on my agenda is what happens in 2023. And and what I'm seeing is a lot of energy going into into debates um, about timing. We're getting a lot of energy going into... And after that, there's going to be a lot of conversations with my management team. This is not about... Ian Foster is not the only person who coaches the All Blacks. I've got a group of 20 that work really, really hard as a management team. And... And this is also about the messaging that they get. And I'm demanding 100% in our preparation because we know we have to earn the public's respect. And we've got to, and we know that we've got to work hard and, and we want to do that. And we want to make this country proud of us and we want to go to France and win a World Cup. So that is our goal. And, and, the, and if I have too many of that group worrying about which regime they're going to be in or how that works, then I think that's a distraction. And, I don't see any reason why that can't happen afterwards. Ian Foster on the platform with us. After Sam Kane spoke and, and he said, look, we don't need this as players. Uh, and then, of course, subsequently Scott Robertson spoke. And every single question when it comes to every single press conference that Mark Robinson attending, he attended the Super Rugby OPICI launch. People were peppering him with questions. He was trying to avoid all those questions. Is, is you know, is... Is this part of what you're do, you're doing as well? Being the leader, you've got you've got twenty people working for you. You've got these all black players. How much of a motivation to speak out was that? The fact that Sam Kane even spoke out, or that you want to do this on behalf of your own staff? Well, it really is. It's about my team, and and one of the all black, uh, you know, big rocks values. Call it whatever you like. That we have is that the team comes first, and the decisions we make are about the team. And and for me, when I know that things are happening that are impacting on my group, my, my role is to, to poke my head up and, and, I guess, say what I think. And and I've sat quiet and I've, I've towed the line listening to this conversation and debate. And all my management is hearing is that other people are determining the timelines for what happens in this team. And... We keep thinking, well, what about our performance this year? Is that, how, how does that rank? And so 
look, what I'm saying may not change a lot, and but I said what I thought, and and I guess I'll be judged because of that. I know that this isn't you versus the board or you versus New Zealand rugby. I mean, that's you know, but but what is it you what is it you want from the board? They got a meeting tomorrow. What what's what's the optimum outcome for you from here? Well, I think if you looked at it, is I just wanted to express that people know that this is what I feel is the right thing for the All Blacks, and and that is to go late. I believe that if people really want to coach this All Black team, is that they will be there whenever the board decides them to be there. And and I, I think my job as the head coach of the All Blacks is to inform them and then guess what, inform the public of what I think is the right right outcome for this team right now. Now, people may not agree with that. That's okay. And But at least I've said what I think is right for this team. And if, and again, if we, we don't, if it doesn't happen, and it doesn't happen as a post-World Cup decision, that's okay. We'll... We'll go to our next mantra, which is we'll have a fight, and we'll but we'll disagree and commit, and then we'll just roll our sleeves up and make sure and get some reassurances that this process won't disrupt our campaign, and and how conversations are had behind the scenes. We make sure that they are are tight and precise, with with nothing sort of happening behind the scenes that undermines this group going into France. Because let's be clear, there's one thing I want. I want us to hop on a plane to France and and we want to go and win a World Cup and make this country proud of us. Ian Foster is with us. Ian, I just had a text come in saying the players have to deal with uncertainty. They don't know whether or not they'll be selected. Their, their, you know, their jobs live in that in that in that realm. Why 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 isn't it you know, why isn't it the same for you if that's the case? Well the answer is it's exactly the same for me. There's there's no certainty um, for for me or my management team. Because post World Cup, you, you could say the same thing applies post World Cup. People don't know, but when, when you commit to a group of people and say eighteen months out, you're the group to take us through to the World Cup. We're a hundred percent behind you. Then we basically want that a hundred percent support going into a World Cup, and and that's all that I'm saying. So we we've just basically want a clear a clear runway going into a World Cup that we have been commissioned and contracted and appointed to do and after that there's massive uncertainty so look i'm not after any more security in my job i'm not after any more guarantees or anything i just am expressing my view of when i think the right time for the coaching appointment is for this team Last time, of course, when this happened and unfolded after the 2019 World Cup, and because you, you, you were a part of that, um, and then it was left so late that all the best coaches had already been signed up, they'd already had other jobs and things. You know, did, is, it, is, is it fair for New Zealand rugby to think, how that process didn't work out how we wanted it last time, then we've got to actually do something different? It would, is, that, is that fair, or would it be more fair if they just sat you down, explained it all, and explained it all publicly? Oh, look, that's, that's up to them to figure that out. And, um, I mean, I think, and I was vocal at the time, I know I got the job, and uh, I'd like to think that all the best coaches weren't, weren't there in the process too, by the way, Marty. I'll just pull you up on that one. But, right. um, but um, I, guess, well, I guess what I'm saying is that last time there was a six-week gap from the World Cup to the appointment process, and... To me, that was too long. It was a big void. Um, I, I don't see any reason why we can't come and straight after the, make a decision, say, 10 days after the All Blacks finish the World Cup, there's going to be a new coaching appointment. Make it short, sharp, and get into it. And um, so I think there are some other alternatives. But that's, you know, I've said my piece on that. I, I probably won't win that. That's okay. But at least I've said my piece. And... And now I need to say, okay, well, let's let's disagree and commit on that and go forward. But it's um, I I didn't want to not represent my group and say, well, hey, let's have a think about what's the best thing for us. And if it gets us thinking about it, and if we come up with the right answer of how we actually prepare this team to the best of our capabilities, that's what I'm keen on because we don't want any excuses. You've mentioned a couple of times your group and the, play, the people that you've got responsibility for. Are these people, players and also your coaches, 
Did you talk to them before you went public, and and are they supporting you in this? And, and were they? I know I'm asking a thousand questions at once again. Sorry, mate, but uh, you know, are they supporting you in this? Did they even urge you to say, Foz, you got to speak out? Uh, the answer is yes and no, and yes, I think to your questions there. But it's, um, I, I think there's uh, our group has wanted to be heard, and there's been a feeling that other people have determined the. You know, and I'm talking not just New Zealand rugby board members, other people outside that have helped pressure the, the process and 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 so they've been allowed to do that and so okay, well we're allowed to pressure the process too. And so that's what we've done. And I think that it gives gives the current all that group a, a voice in that market and we'll leave it to the decision makers to sort out. So I think that's fair enough. Have I talked to the players about it? No, I haven't. And I don't think that's fair. I think that they've got enough on their plate just going out and playing well for their super rugby clubs. And, and I know they're excited about that in a big World Cup year. And hence, and that's the very reason, one of the reasons we're having this conversation. We just want the conversation to be about rugby. And and I don't really, not that excited about the next two or three months being about the conversation about being other stuff. Uh, I was told by a board member today that they believe if they did a fan poll, people would want you gone. I don't know whether you believe that to be true or not. What my question is, though, is do you care about public sentiment? Do you care about what people think? And how much notice do you take of that? Uh, Do I care about it? Of course I care about it. I I, I care deeply about what people think. And um, uh, human being like like everyone else, and, and you, you want to be popular and you want people, but it, it's it's not the easiest market nowadays to, to to tell people everything that you're doing and how you're doing it. It's Sometimes it becomes a little bit niggly. I know I've also got a... I'm in the, I'm in the hot seat and I get judged on performance, and, and I accept that and understand that. But, and, you know, we went through the Irish series last year that, that we lost, and... A whole lot of things happened around that we all know about. But at the end of the day, um, I got back to 100% to go through the World Cup. And the last part of the year, the last seven tests, we basically went through unbeaten. We had a bit of a glitch in that last 10 minutes. But I'm loving the group we've got at the moment. I feel like we're progressing. We've learned some lessons. We've we've heard some of the criticisms, felt it, and, and we've actually made some changes. And... And I just want this year to be about cementing that and basically go in with excitement into a World Cup. So I can't be sidetracked by people who don't like me or whatever. I, I, I get all that. That's the passion of it. But what I'd love people to do is to to get them behind the All Blacks and support us. And there's, you know, there's too much been made of personalities and, and who the coach is. We're part of a team. And what's the key is the team. How much of this, or does it sap you at all? I mean, it obviously takes your attention away from what you want your attention to be on. Does it sap you? Does it, does it make you feel at any stage, God, it's just too bloody hard? It's just too hard? <laughs> well, it's part of the job nowadays. And does it take energy? Yes, it does. You've just got to gotta deal with that. Um, and, you know, the, but the thing that saps you the most, I guess, is if you feel like you've got to, walk around on tiptoes and be careful what you've got to say. And I think that part of this job is that I'm a great believer in high performance. There's no room for PR. you just got to say it what it is and, and you get judged. And then you, But if you say it what it is, at least you believe it, and then you go and do it and people know what you are to be accountable for. So so I like to keep things pretty simple like that. Two more, yeah, sorry. Keep look, going. Pardon? There you going. go. Your question is probably important. No, no, no. Two more questions and I'll let you go. Okay, so from here again, and I don't know whether I've asked this, but I want to ask it again. It's okay. So the board meet on Thursday. What, What is the ideal outcome from here? How does this How does this end so that you can do what it is that you're saying that you want to do, which is prepare this team to go to a World Cup? And that's starting with Super Rugby this weekend, which is what we should be talking about. I wanted to get you on the program this week to talk about Super Rugby, the changes, the minutes, the, you know, the guys are playing, positions. Yep. What you look, that's what I wanted to talk to you about, right? Well, I'd love to have that conversation. And so what's got to happen now is clearly... It, 
um, everyone everyone just wants uh, I, I guess what's going to happen very soon is the actual process is going to unfold we're all going to there's going to be reaction to that. It is what it is. I guess the commitment from me is that I've said what I've said. Um, I believe what's right for this team. Um, but I also disagree and commit and, and hoe into the rest of the year. And it's, you know, you could say I've got no choice about that. But I and my group are massively driven to put this team first and do whatever we can for this World Cup. We're excited by it. And, um, so uh, we'll adapt and adjust to what, whatever the next plan is and we'll go to it. But I also want to make sure that we're... I don't want to be sitting back in November and say, hey, what happened in March, April, May caused so much disruption that we lost the World Cup because that's just an excuse that we shouldn't be hearing. So what needs to come out of my mouth is that I did everything I can to prepare this team as well as we can. And, and that's what I'm going to do. All right, finally, and this is a completely different topic, completely different question. Bowden Barrett has come out today and saying, hey, look, you know, we've got to start looking differently now. It used to be that you had to stay in New Zealand and play to keep an all-black jersey. We've got to start looking at the fact that players are allowed to play overseas and be selected for the all-blacks. Do you agree with that, or are you still of the mind that if you don't play your rugby here in New Zealand, there's no jersey? Uh, look, I, I'm a, I, I think... At the moment, we've we've got a, a balance between we've almost got some necessary evils, I guess, where we've been able to balance people going overseas, having stints, and coming back. The big dilemma we've got is, from an all black view, you could argue that it's a reasonably logical decision to do that. From a New Zealand rugby perspective, um, we want our best players playing in the Super Rugby clubs, and. We want to have our best best product we possibly can in our domestic competition, and and so I believe the best way for that is is our current regulations. And I think at the moment we've got enough flexibility to work around a few players and and individualise some contracts. I know people get some people don't understand that or get a bit frustrated, but I think if we go the other way, then it, you know the danger is is that we end up with a too much of an exodus of players that that dilutes our domestic competitions and I don't think that's good for us. I hope I've covered as much as I possibly can and asked you the questions. Is there anything else that you would like to add or are we done? Are you okay with it? No, I think we are done. All right. What about you? I'm, I'm hoping that this shuts the door, puts a lid on it, mate, and that we actually all... Look, all I want, Ian, is look, I'm just a dumb old fan with a microphone, mate, and I just want to know that, like, before 2011... That all of the bitterness and the bollocks about whether Ted should be coached, all of that's put to bloody one side and we actually focus on what we should be doing, which is trying to win a World Cup. That's um, that's that's stupid me. That's all I think about. I just want to win the bloody tournament. Done. Yep. Well, well, we're very much blind, so let's just get into it, eh? Thank you so much for your time. I really respect the fact that you've given us 20-something minutes of it. Ian Foster, All Black Coach, live there on the platform.